Should we do Botch This Jerks? Sure. Uh, I watched a movie, a rare movie watching called Reality. And that is the docudrama about reality winner, the, oh, the, the woman who got arrested mm -hmm. for leaking secrets. So, Did it make you feel bad for her? So it's very interesting. It's not really a movie in the traditional sense. They have re they've taken the actual dialogue from her arrest. Okay? It's all takes place during her arrest and it's the all the actual dialogue from when the FBI shows up at her front door to when they take her to 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 wherever they took her. <laughs> uh and it's really interesting just to see that played out. Nothing has changed at all. None of the dialogue has changed. It's very interesting just to watch it all play out. And it's not a, even a question about feeling, yeah, I mean, you do feel sorry for her a little bit, but it's not even about that. It's just more about, wow, this is what it's like when the FBI show up at your door, when you've done something like this. And you know, it's not really, I mean, it's dramatized a little bit because they're actors, but at least, you know, every, every word is authentic. So it's very interesting. It's on HBO Max, and it's actually Sydney Sweeney is playing reality winner. Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria, super hot Sydney Sweeney, is in this with no makeup on. That's how they. That's how they did it, basically. But everybody was great in it. It's, you should watch it. Reality. It's only like an hour and a half, which is great too. Appreciated that. So uh, that's what we watched. Cool. Is that it? That's what you got. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll go next. What are you reading I, over there? Nothing. I was I didn't know if you were going into something else. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm just there's like a list here, so I figured. Wham! It was... I know. <laughs> Wham! I watched the Wham documentary Thanks, on Netflix. Uh -huh. Did anyone else watch the Wham doc on Netflix? I watched the George Michael documentary on the plane recently. Yes. No. This is different. This is the Wham documentary on Netflix. Much different. Yes. This one was made about the other guy. <laughs> this one does focus on the other guy. It focuses it a does. little bit more on Andrew. Not that actually, no, that's not true. It focuses on both of them, but it uses materials that they got from Andrew Ridgely, like original recordings and photographs and home movies, because they became friends when they were 12. And they're his Andrew Ridgely's mother is like a scrapbook enthusiast. So she literally had like 30 scrapbooks filled with never seen photographs and they i guess recorded you know they spliced together interviews but they had you know permission to use all of these things that a lot of people had never have never seen before it's actually very interesting if you're curious to know you know the the story of wham i mean they were a gigantic group in for and they were really only around for like four years as wham before george right, michael before went george solo. michael went solo yeah, and sort of like how that became went to be and, you know, how Andrew Ridgely sort of handled, could he see the writing on the wall, basically, which he could. I bet he could. But he could, <laughs> yeah. Hey, he was smart enough to get a co-writing credit on Careless Whisper, and that's all Oh, yeah, I, I mean, the, the, more power to him. He they, they, they wrote that song together when they were like 15. It was the first I mean, you Careless listen to Whisper. the... The lyrics and that sounds about right. It's a good song, but like... it's a great. I love that song. It's a great song, but uh, but then you get to hear the difference in the writing and something in like a freedom for the first freedom, not freedom ninety for you, you know, wham George Michael fans, freedom, freedom. and freedom. Yeah, yeah freedom I, ninety I is pretty is a good. Very different song, but very yeah, good. It, yeah, very but good. You, you hear the lyrical difference, and you could hear how Andrew Ridgely was you know a fine enough songwriter when he was a teenager mm -hmm. to get to that beginning stage with george michael together but he never really evolved as a songwriter he was still snapping his fingers while he basically. was writing songs and george michael's like stop snapping your fingers we're beyond that now yeah and that's basically it george michael was you know he's like well no i'm a fucking artist and this is how this is you know now we're doing this and this and yeah so you know he couldn't compete with that now, no, most people would not be able to compete with that. Yeah, I think George Michael was a pretty big star. Yeah, so. that's what I mean. Well, not even a big star, but he also was writing everything and he was producing yeah. everything also. Yes. George Michael took over production on uh, Make It Big. 
So there was a lot of what he was doing. Have that... you seen the George Michael documentary? I have not. I assume get on it's... a plane. It's on. <laughs> it's on all of the planes that you like to fly. <laughs> I love to watch it, it on a plane. It, it is a perfect watch on a plane movie. It's very good. It's Might of be course too good to be watched on a plane. A little sad as well. Yeah, they talk about that too. The cl- you know how b- being closeted and all that stuff. And... But it's good. He told Andrew originally though when he was nineteen that he was gay. I'm gay. See you later. Basically, no, nineteen. <laughs> that was there was there's still a few years to go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he knew the whole time. He did. He just never, you know, he kept he kept the secret. What a great guy. Good. What a his hero. Friend. He was his friend. I believe this is, it. Is this next thing another music documentary? This next thing, yes. I also watched the John Waite documentary. So that it's interesting to go from a documentary about a group that this, had this like something I wasn't missing. Yeah, oh, go away. <laughs> that was terrible. I loved it. You're not missing it at all. No, yeah, I'm yeah. not. I am not missing this documentary at all. <laughs> what else are we watching? <laughs> oh, did you get the jokes? GP? Yeah, no. that's the only song that the guy fucking put out. Yeah. So it's interesting to watch a documentary about a one, essentially a one hit wonder. Is it? So. Hmm? Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. That's it. That's all I have to say about it. What who okay. watched Warrior? Who's been watching Warriors? Me. It's on HBO. Season three is here. It's in 4K finally. And there's a lot of good quality kung fu. Good. That's all you need to know. If you want to watch violent kung fu with some nudity and lesbians, I recommend you know, you know uh, who Warriors. Loves it? You know who loves this show? And he tells me all the time. Who? My, my father. He's like, if, if you've been watching Warrior and HBO Max, I'm like, do I have to watch it from the beginning? Is you watch it, watch it from the beginning? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's an it's a kung fu action movie turned into a TV show. Okay, I mean, I, I it's I based would, on Bruce Lee, the writings of Bruce Lee. I have a lot means. of other things to watch now because like, a handful like of John my Wade, shows, the Hard Way Part Two. No, like a lot of my shows premiered. A third? Last... Is there a third Wham documentary? Like there's uh... a third. <laughs> I was excited for that Wham documentary. I'm not. No gonna one's lie. doubting I that. knew. I knew it was coming, and the day it came out, I'm like, oh yeah, Wham documentary. No kids in the house. That's appointment Turn viewing. Turn off the lights. Watch the Wham documentary. Pants down on the ankles, around the ankles, tissues uh, right er, here. Ernest Semper in the chat wants to know where he can see the John Waite documentary. That is on Amazon. Hell, hell, the third circle. That's Amazon where it is, Com. over and over again. I'm, I'm glad you got to which circle of hell that was. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. I was, I was going to be flipping around trying to find it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I started watching the new season of Miracle Workers, which premiered this week. Where are they at now? They are in the apocalypse, like Mad Max. It's like a Mad Max spoof. All right. How's mm-hmm. it? How's it? It's Hold cute. Up. It's cute. It's funny. Still has still. Harry Potter. Uh, it's it still has Harry Potter, Dan- Daniel Radcliffe, and uh, Geraldine Viswanathan. I believe is how you pronounce her last name. I don't want to say it wrong, and I'm sure I did. And Steve Buscemi is still there, and. Uh, this season is the at least the first two episodes were directed by David Wayne from the state, and he directed uh, Hot Wet American Summer and Role Models. If you like that kind of comedy, so there's a little it's a little bit more jokey, I think, than the last couple of seasons have been. So, hmm. so yeah, there's a li- there's a few more jokes. What else? And and more guest stars too, but I don't want to spoil that for people. Okay, yet. I'll I'll, uh, oh. I'll try it. The I don't know the setting and the, <laughs> the more jokiness have me questioning if this is the miracle workers for me. I, I can totally understand that. I think I like I, you know mm, I've liked all four seasons. This is being the fourth, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna stick with it. Uh, I watched the new Superman animated series on HBO Max. That looks it's like a, it's like for kids, is it? It's, I mean, it's not, it's not adult. Technically, it's an adult swim show. So I think it's not supposed to be for Wait, it's for adult kids. swim? Okay, adult got it. Swim. All right, so then it's, I would say it's for adults. Yeah, I guess, it, yeah, but it's not like. It's not Rick and Morty. There's no like. You well, know, I'm assuming ins- that there's no fucking in it or anything. Yeah, but. yeah. 
But uh, yeah, wait, is that in Rick and Mort- Morty? There I never watched here. Rick and Morty. Me neither. Is I don't that know what, what they it do is. all the time. That's I, I assume yeah. so. Yes, there is lots of sex in Rick and Morty. Between the two of them, no. Oh. Uh, Morty would, does impregnate a robot who gives birth to an alien with six arms. Yeah. How, how about the new series Fartsburg or whatever by that guy? I, I haven't watched that. Have you not? Fartsburg yeah. is something. It's, it's something along those those lines. What's what's the name of that? He's got a new show. Oh. The guy's got a new show coming out. I saw advertisements for it during. The I All-Star believe game, you. Ooh. Oh, I the guy who got canceled. Yeah. Justin he, Wood he got, Boyland. Um, I'm, is that his name? That that is his name. Fartland. Fartlandia. What else? Uh, I also wait. Watched... How's the Superman show? Superman show's good. It's worth your time if you if you like Superman. It's worth your time. The first episode does a lot does a lot of heavy lifting. What's the angle though? What's the angle on this one? Uh, it's like a retelling of an origin story, sort of. Where it's Superman's first day, Clark Kent's first day of work at the Daily Planet. Okay. That's how the season's, that's how it starts. It's Clark Kent's first day at the Daily Planet. He's young. His roommate is young Jimmy Olsen. They're interns together at the Daily Planet. And their intern boss is Lois Lane. Got it. Kareem Manju in the chat says it's anime is the angle. It has an anime style. Okay. That makes sense. I saw a screenshot of it and that does check out. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I have no complaints so far. There's only been two episodes, and they're 20 minutes each. Nice. I, I was way off, by the way. It's not, it's not Bartsburg. It's Crapopolis, <laughs> and it's, it's not by uh, Justin Roiland. It's by the other co-creator, Dan Harmon. Oh, it's a Dan oh. Harmon show? It's a Dan Harmon show, Crapopolis. I, I would give a Dan Harmon show, maybe. I mean, he's also a jerk. I don't know. Everybody sucks. <laughs> Justin probably can't get a Crapopolis made right now. I don't think so. He got replaced on that other show. Shitberg. Uh, I forget. I don't even know what it's called. Anyway, but he was replaced by the guy from Legion. You like that show. Dan uh, Stevens? Yeah, Dan Stevens. He's a good actor. He is a good actor. I also watched, my wife and I actually did already, we binged the first two episodes of the After Party before we did this. That's why I was late to logging on, because we wanted to watch. That's not ad. professional. I'm not professional. Unprofessional, I believe. Is I, the word. I know. I said I am. I am unprofessional. But that show is so good. Did you watch? The first, I watched, you watched the complete first series. Yeah, yes, or first so, season. What is so the? He, what's the hook on this one? Uh, somebody else get murdered. Someone else gets murdered at the wedding of. If you remember, at the la- end of last season, uh, Sam Richardson winds up with the girl that he has the big crush on since high school. Mm-hmm. It's now a year later. They're still together. They're going to her sister's wedding. And the day after the wedding, the groom wakes up dead. So there's another murder. Sam Richardson doesn't know what to do. So he calls Tiffany Haddish, who comes right over. So they could literally just do it all over again. Just that now they're spoofing different movies. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's a new murder. It's a new mystery. It's new spoofs. It's okay. still very entertaining and engaging. So, you know, it's got uh, Ken Jong in there, Zach Woods. Uh, oh, God, what the heck is that guy's name? Uh, Jack Whitehall is in there. Uh, it's a good cast. Who's making up names now? I, like, I oh. am <laughs> making <laughs> up names. Oh, they do have Jack Whitehall. Oh, that's where he's been. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the guy, the, what's his name? Uh Hauser. No, he has three names, but his last name is Hauser. And he was in an he was in an I think you should leave sketch. He's also Emmy an Emmy nominated actor, but he was in the I think you should leave sketch where he's playing the gangster in the play and the other guy keeps stealing his lines. Yes. Michael J. Hauser. Yeah, he's in it too. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Poopy Pants, MD writes in and he asks, has Wombat soured on Guy Fieri? I looked this up to see what it was and apparently Trump was at some UFC fight and Guy Fieri talked to him and so did a couple other people. Yeah, I'm like, I'm of, I am obviously of two minds on this whole situation. I don't, I don't like the, the, you know, the Mr. Trump, I'm not a fan. No, really? You? I know. This isn't a secret. This is not a secret, but... You love Guy Fieri. 
I do like Guy Fieri, and he's done a lot of good things for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot for uh, the LGBTQ community. He's done a lot to help starving children. Mm. He's done a lot to help the restaurant community. He's literally raised millions of dollars to help. A lot to help obesity. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You mean encourage it. Yeah. Um, So to say I should not like someone anymore because he was at a sporting event where someone else was and someone's like, hey, there's the 45th president of the United States. What is he supposed to do? I get it. I know people wanted him to like go up to him. And what do punch- you feel? We know we don't care about other people. What are your what are you, currently in your mind? Are you still are you still happy with Guy Fieri still watching his programming? Guy Fieri has given me no reason to think that okay. he is a fan of Donald Trump. Okay, fair enough. I will, he will say this: I know watch. that he is a very close business partner with Sammy Hagar. They have like a couple of companies together. They both look the same. And they well, I think, I think that's it might be the, the same guy. Yeah, and I know that Sammy Hagar despises Trump. So I think that I'm gonna go with the it's the company you keep, not not the people you shake hands with at a UFC fight. You're really giving this a lot of thought, I feel. I, well, you know how many people have asked me this stupid question in the last four who, days? Who? Where? All over. His like, wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, who are you seriously, talking to? I've been asked by relatives. I've been asked oh my by God. friends. Oh, nobody talks to me I've at been all. asked online. I've been asked on I've been asked on no less than three social media platforms oh, what I think of the guy Fietti shaking hands with Donald Trump situation. Proof that social media is a mistake. So right there. Yeah. I, I just I just if I was at a UFC event and someone said, Hey, there's the president, I doubt I would be confrontational i would probably do something similar just because i would want to get the moment over with right maybe he said hey mr president let's meet out in the parking lot and i'll take you to flavor town and but he puts it put his fist up exactly you, know what I'm you don't know we don't know. You don't know you so don't know. i don't know you don't know what he's like at home i want to i want to think that he's better than that right uh <clears throat> The Real Dark Paul writes in and says, you guys think it's fair to talk about box office numbers with any new movies still? COVID isn't over, but everyone's starting to act like it is, but I personally know a few dozen people in my life still who don't want to go to the movies over safety concerns. I don't know if it's safety concerns necessarily, or maybe they just didn't miss not going to the movies and can watch a movie at home in more comfortable surroundings. I think that's where we're at now. That's so... I mean, fair. I, I don't yeah, know about I, fair, but I, what are we? I think it's fair to talk about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it seems fair. I mean, can you compare them to pre-COVID? Maybe. Maybe I think, I think we're getting. I think we're getting, getting close there, right? to. Yeah, I, I think there's still a weirdness as far as the time frame between theatrical release and home release is bananas to me. Right, knowing that Super Super Mario Brothers movie which I saw in the theaters is the highest grossing film so far this year, unless it's changed in the last like four days. Did Avatar come out this year? Is it, still yes. ahead? Is it ahead of Avatar? I believe so. Hmm. Um, and that is already available for purchase and will be free to stream at home in like two weeks. That to me is crazy. Yeah. How how quickly it's you know how quickly we've gone in that. How much money you wasted by going to the theater? It's I mean if I could have waited a month I'd be able to see it at home, but I won't. I mean I'm I don't regret seeing it in the theater though. I would say that too. I like yeah it's it's uh the top movie so far of uh 2023, uh with 573 million dollars domestic. It is also worldwide number one being the only movie so far this year to make over a billion dollars in the box office. So Avatar must have been last. Nope. Like Avatar last Avatar is the number fifth movie, five movie of the year at $283 million behind The Little Mermaid, Guardians 3, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse at number two. Although Guardians 3 is number two worldwide and Fast X is number no, three Avatar worldwide. came out in 2022. It did. It came out at Christmas. Yeah, it came out before Christmas. Okay, so let's see how I I could look to tell you how much that's made. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, Mario is number one. Mar, Mar, yeah, Mario. Mario is number one. Mario. Yeah. Yep. You did great. Good job, Mario. 
Uh, internationally, <laughs> by the way, yes, Avatar has made more than Mario with $1.6 billion compared to Mario's $1.3 billion. So there is a three, $300 million difference. And yes, it would be number one if it came out this year at $640 million. I'm glad we're both kind of right and cheapy. He can be right too. I don't, yes. I don't yeah. care about this. Nope. But, yeah, about no. I know what you do care about though. Long Island Retro, which is coming up August, weekend of August 11th. And I just literally during the recording of the show learned about our time slot. Ooh, so this ooh. is a worldwide is exclusive fresh to everybody here. Fresh to everybody. We will be doing our thing Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Oh, good. We got the p.m. slot in the main theater. <laughs> p.m. slot. <laughs> Why is that better? So we can we can sleep in. The 3.30 a.m. slot is not oh, nearly oh. as good. Oh, right. Yeah, that, that, that was the joke. Oh, there's a uh, kids cosplay contest that day as well. Oh, yes. I was supposed to do something about that today. What are we supposed I, to do? I think my, Remind my kids to think about what they wanted to dress up as. See, right. we need to look at what the age range is on that, because I have a feeling our children may have aged out of that, GV. I mean, I don't have to do anything. They I, that's for, what I'm going to be doing. birth certificates on that, or what? <laughs> I don't know. They don't give two don't fucks. Just, you could enter. I know. There are adults I in know. there. We'll um, see if uh, if my daughter wants to do anything. She might. She's strange that way. I hope that Ty does some sort of, I think you should leave cosplay. That would be yeah. my goal. He should do uh, the, the Tugger. DC Tuggers? Yeah. That would be good. Classic. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Anyway, go to liretro.com. Get your tickets. Come to the CAGCast and, you know, have a good time. Buy some there stuff. Was some, there was, I want to say it might have been the Dodgers, but I could be wrong. Again, it was a baseball team had an I think you should leave night. That's pretty cool. Where a lot of people showed up in shirts with unusual patterns. Complicated patterns. Sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. Mrs. GB's not having any of it. Mm-mm. She's sick of it all. Mm-hmm. I think if she had one wish, she could just wish that show away that it never <laughs> existed. <laughs> I'm always like, can I just show you this one sketch? Just one. Just one. Let me just show you just one. She's like, no. Just one. I th- you're going to like it. It's short. Just one. And she gives in. She watches it. And then she's just like, no. No. All right. 